Podcasts. I thought I'd share a story with you today about a trip to New York and uh, where I saw Bob Dylan and Van Morrison. Um, so, I'm in New York. Uh, the details are a bit blurry. Maybe some will come back to me. Um, I have to go to the box office to get my ticket and tickets. Uh, and I don't remember how I got them, but one of the dudes from Van Morrison's band is there picking up tickets for his friends. I talked to him a bit. Can't remember what cat he was. I think he was the bass player. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to the show with a friend of mine from New York called Alan. And I, I didn't know anything about our tickets. I didn't know the place. It was uh, the theater at Madison Square Garden. It used to be called, I believe it was called the Felt Forum. Uh, a very famous Grateful Dead concert from back then. Um, so Alan and I go to the show. We find out that his seat is the absolute last row. Mine is one row in front of his. It's this consummate New Yorker says, we're not sitting in those seats. They're terrible. We walk right up to the front, front row, and he grabs a chair and puts one right on the edge of the first row. And we sit down, we watch the entire um, Van Morrison show from that spot. No one said anything to us during the show. It was an amazing show. Um, I don't remember what album it was. Poetic, poetic Champions Compose in and around that period. There's a guy who just stinks of cologne walking in front of me. I can't stand that. Uh, so Van Morrison's concert was very churchy. It was very uh, uplifting and uh, energized me. I don't know if somebody gave me some uppers. Oh no. <laughs> it was just the buzz from the show. Um, yeah, I remember intermission. I remember feeling as though, as though I was off the ground. My feet didn't feel like they were quite on the ground. Oh, okay. Bob Dylan's show. I go back to my seat right there in the front. Don't ask me how. Nobody asked me for a ticket or I showed it to them and they didn't realize that I was in the second last freaking row. Supposed to be anyway. So Alan sits down. They notice that his chair doesn't belong there. But my chair, my seat was an empty one. That's why I was able to get away with it, I guess. The person just didn't show up or they were backstage on the stage instead, they were somewhere else. Um, yeah, Bob Dylan said, you're back then, he was playing nice electric music, he was playing guitar. That was around 1988, maybe 89. I don't believe it was any further than that. Oh, well, maybe it was, maybe it was around 1990 or 91. I really don't remember, sometime around 1990. Okay, well, at the end of the show, I hook up with Alan, who went somewhere else, and my friend, uh, Slava Ukraina, my friend, uh, uh, Eddie from uh, Cranston. And one of them, I think it was Ed, said, hey, Bob Dylan's having a party. We should try and go to it. We tried. We didn't get in. Um, and then he says, oh, I know where Van Morrison's hanging out. He's hanging out at a really nice hotel. 
in uh, New York City, in Manhattan, I think. So we pile into, I think, Alan's car. We drive over to the hotel. It was a beautiful hotel, it was all marble, Art Deco, huge doorway, huge doors, high ceilings. We go right to the bar. And the first person pretty much that I see in there is Van Morrison. And he's sitting at the bar. He's got these huge drinks. I like to say a drink so big that you'd be tempted to put your feet in it. And they're orange, something with orange juice, I guess vodka maybe. Um, and he's just, uh, they're listening to a soundboard tape of his show from that night. We're kicking, uh, we order drinks, we're relaxing and taking in the atmosphere. And my friends want an autograph, so one of them or both of them go up to Van the Man and uh, they borrowed my pen. I remember it was red, red pen. And they go and get their autographs and talk to him. I just sat at the bar. I didn't bother Van the Man. I didn't want to bother him. When I was a kid, I met lots of famous people. One, one of the most famous people I've ever met was O.J. Simpson. I met him, I went to a taping with my family of the Bobby Vinton show. <laughs> you remember Bobby Vinton? So, uh, yeah, OJ picked me up in his arms. He was very nice to me. I remember a huge dude, football player, right? Huge, and picked me up in his arms. He gave me a couple autographs, one for me and one for somebody else. Uh, getting back to the story. We're there, we have a couple drinks, we chill. And um, at one point, the tape that Van the Man is listening to jams and it starts playing backwards. And I just looked in his direction and I said, backwards satanic me messages. Whoa, whoa, that was funny. We chill a little more. Van the Man at that point got bothered by a couple of different people and uh, he moved to a private little room. It's like a little library just off of the bar, adjoining to the bar that we're in. Uh, so we wanna leave, we're hungry, we need to get some food. We're gonna go for a falafel in uh, Greenwich Village. Uh, walking by Van the Man, and I said to him, hey Van, I just wanna let you know, I probably put my hand up like that just to, to indicate that I don't wanna bother him. Excuse me. And I said, uh, your show tonight was absolutely out of this world. It was a spiritual happening. And I uh, had the best time and I told him that my feet were off the ground during the intermission and he said god bless you god bless all of you i don't know how many of us he was seeing then he again had a whole whack of those tall orange drinks he was surrounded by beautiful blonde women uh it was quite the sight i wish should have taken a picture but probably didn't even have a camera on me at the time okay um, I said, oh, hey, Van, me and uh, my friends, uh, Alan and Eddie, whom he had already had the pleasure of meeting, I said, we're going to get falafels over uh, in the village. Why don't you come with us? And he, he looked at me like he had never heard the word falafel before, which I know isn't true. I know he'd heard the word falafel. He knows what that is. You know what that is. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's funny. Everything's funny today. Um, so yeah, he didn't come with us. And we went to the village and the falafel shop was closed. And we, I think we all had a slice of pizza instead. Or maybe nothing. And uh, yeah, that's my story about New York. Uh, a friend of mine was living there at the time, went to visit her. 
stayed at the bed and breakfast there at Lexington and Park. Nice neighborhood. Uh, you know, went to Strawberry Fields. Lots of time hanging out on top of the roof, partying and having fun. And that's it from Spike Asks. A little bit of content for you.